I think this is probably the latest I've ever showed up. My bad. I was, uh... <laughs> You can't get here on time. I know. Oh, yeah. There's E. We're already. As long as you guys get the ripping of me over with before I show up, that'd be great. <laughs> Ordering butter chicken. I like that. No, I uh, I had a day. I, have, uh, I, I thought I left myself enough time to get ready for the show, and I did not leave myself enough time to get ready for the show. I've been working on the coffee table. I had a window. I finally had a window of time where I was both not working and uh, it wasn't raining. Because I like to do my sanding in the driveway when I'm doing like much sanding. Um, and so I have not had a day where I have been not working. And like during the period of time when it's actually light out, and it's been not raining since I had <laughs> put this coffee table into a state where it could be sanded. And today I had that time. I was like, the sky opened up and I was able to actually do some sanding. So I took the dry assembly apart, started sanding all the parts. Look, it's not in dry assemble anymore. It's actually like in parts again. So... I was sanding and then it, and then it started raining a little bit and then I so I had to drag everything in and then it opened back up again so I got everything back out to get some more sanding done and then wife needed to go to the store to get some closet organizer stuff so I had to go do that and then I got back and I wanted to get at least some stuff I wanted to get at least the everything all the parts done to 150 was my goal so that i could actually start gluing it up and i didn't actually even get to that i got everything sanded to 80 100 i got everything sanded to 100 and i got the side assemblies sanded to 150. so at least tonight when i put it back into dry assembly i can glue the side assemblies when I'm putting it back together into dry, dry fit so that the side assemblies can set up. And then tomorrow, hopefully I can take it back apart. The side assemblies will be glued up and then I can sand the rest of it up to 150 and get another sub assembly glued up, put it back into dry fit. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that was probably more information than anybody was interested in how's everybody doing i'm sorry that i'm late apparently my lateness has affected the attendance <laughs> but that's fine i will i'll hang out with whoever's here hey megan how's it going bj's here beckham's here the hoff who's the hoff that's a new name is that somebody just changed their name it's probably bennett <laughs> No, I don't know. Welcome, if you're new. Uh, yeah, that, the the build video on the coffee table is going to be a good one, Beckham. That's that's a good point. It, I think this is uh, this, people are going to enjoy the coffee table. It's the it's essentially the same coffee table as the African mahogany coffee table that I made a year and a half ago. That was like. It was like a six-part series. Um, but this one, I've learned a lot since then. So this one I can probably cut down into like a three-part. And uh, yeah, but it's it's a gorgeous guy. It's my favorite piece of furniture that exists in the world. And I designed it myself. And this is the second one that I'm ever going to make. Riley's Woodcraft. Hello. Welcome. That's another new name. I like new names that show up to this thing. I'm I've already had a day, so I'm I'm having a, a bevy already. Sheldon's here. BJ says it looks good from what I've seen. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's my perfect. It's 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 my favorite coffee table. I wouldn't say it's my favorite piece of furniture. I misspoke when I said that. Fred Hans, first time here. Right on. We got people. Welcome, welcome. 
Uh, it's not my favorite piece of furniture that exists in the world. It is my favorite coffee table that exists in the world. Uh, but I'm also biased because I designed it. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, you want to see something that I cool that I made this week? Since we're we're having a lathe show tonight, I uh, I chucked up a piece of this piece of swamp ash that I made that I had in the stock, and it's got some awesome flaming and stuff in it, and it's it was it was a hefty piece of it was twelve ish inches across. Two and a half inches deep. And then uh, I played with some dye. And it turned out rad. And I, I, I was not quite flat on my recess. So the brand didn't go really well. But uh, this was a fun thing that I did this week. Uh, it's kind of a shell. It would make a great like fruit bowl or something as a centerpiece on a table. I think. Yeah, it was. I was actually pretty happy. For as frustrating as this was, I the, the uh, you'll see when the video goes up of me making this that I, there was there was some there was some tension. <laughs> but yeah, it came together really nice. And I did it like a, a lacquer on the outside to give it some extra shine and gloss with the oil wax on the inside. So you put food in it or whatever. I, I pre, I'm actually quite, this is, this might be my new favorite bowl that I've ever turned. It might, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough thing to say, but yeah, pretty happy with it. Oh, Use unicorn spit. Is that like, are you being funny or is that an actual product? Because I want to try that if that's an actual product. <laughs> that sounds like a fantastic finish. Oh, it's a dye. Yeah, that makes sense. Unicorn spit as a dye. I'm just using like, essentially it's a, I think it's marketed as a fabric dye. We it got it at the fabric store. But it's just a water-based uh, dye. I think it's RIT is the brand name of it. Uh, and I layered on, I did a, a navy blue as the base coat. And then I sanded it back. And then to, so that it would go deep into the grain and, and highlight some things. And then I just did the purple over top of it. And yeah, it turned out pretty cool. I'm going to get a few more colors. And I'm gonna try some some fun new ideas. I've got red and navy blue and purple right now. I want to get an orange. I want to get yeah. I need to try playing with some dyes on some things because it's a little bit finicky. Dye is finicky. Like your your surface prep needs to be really good for dye to work well. And I, I'm not. Especially with my lathe stuff, I'm not really great at finish prep. I sand until it's like good enough most of the time. <laughs> and good enough is different when you're talking about dye because it shows it everything that you didn't get perfect is going to show through when you start dyeing stuff. Uh, so I'm learning, I'm trying new things. You got to keep trying new things in life. And, uh, that's that's part of the reason that this one was a hassle because it, it wasn't working and then I had to recut the outside and then <coughs> and then when I lacquered it and I was sanding the lacquer, I sanded through the lacquer and got down to the die again and it started sanding the die away. So I had to recut and yeah, it was. But in the end, it turned out cool. <laughs> And tonight we're going to do some Yatoba. Bought BJ a pressure pot for Christmas. Ooh. I actually have been looking at making an epoxy order. 
and playing with epoxy this year. It was in my uh, my resolutions, my 2021 resolutions video that I'm going to be playing with epoxy this year. And so I maybe either need a pressure pot or a vacuum chamber or something as well, probably. But I don't, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, epoxy is going to be fun to play with. Have fun with that, BJ. Send me some pics. I want to see, I want to see what people are playing with. Let's, uh, let's spin up the Yatoba. I think Penel isn't even here because he's like protesting that Burl didn't win the vote. <laughs> Vacuum chamber is more for stabilizing. Yeah, probably. I don't know what I need. I'm gonna look into it. Uh, Okay, <laughs> so you guys will see when we go over there how not ready for this show I am because most of what was in this blank is still all over the place over there. Because I was going to get ready for the show, but I also wanted to sand a coffee table. <laughs> Look at this nonsense over here. Here's some, and here's, this is what the lathe station currently looks like. Uh, so let's clean you guys off some space. <laughs> you can just sit in the shavings tonight. <laughs> and we'll do this piece of yatoba. Hopefully, it goes relatively smoothly. It's a pretty small blank. It's only about two inches high. I think it's two by eight. We'll make ourselves a little tray of some kind. Freshly sharpened gouge. Masks over here. I mean, the heat does need to be off. Thank you. <laughs> I love that people are catching on. <laughs> I blew my breaker once earlier today, too. Cutting the angles on the top of the legs. Turned my table saw on and blew the breaker because my heat was on. All right. Let's see what happens to the Yatoba. is a cool wood. This is the second time, I think, that I've turned Yatoba, is how I like to say it. Um, some people call it Jatoba. I don't really like that. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice, rich, red, quite hard wood uh, with a nice, tight grain has some interesting colorations and stuff, some different different depths of red and dark brown streaking and stuff in it. It's pretty cool. Ooh, we're going fast already. I like it. Have a think. That's cool. Couple little 
couple coves going up. Never done that. That might be cool. We'll see. Actually, yeah, yeah, see, I think people are agreeing. I like this, what's happening naturally here. Cove up, and then a nice thick rim with a little bit of a cove that may or may not sand out by accident. All right, let's do that. dusty. Yatoba is a little bit dusty. But I, yeah, I kind of like that. Well, it's flatten off the bottom. Okay, that shape came out relatively quickly, hey? That's what happens when you just kind of like make a couple of cuts and <laughs> let it do what it do. <laughs> Oh, Pinnell did show up. Uh, we thought you were protesting because because uh, the uh, the Burl didn't win the poll this week. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not dying at purple.
and it just glistens too. Like that's the other cool thing about Yatoba is that like the shitoyance of it is pretty rad. Let's sand it. I think. I think that could be that could be the outside of this thing already. Oh, am I ready to sand something? Hold on. <laughs> That might actually work for a start. Is this gonna? Yeah. yeah, that rim might be not awesome for sanding, but try and keep that relatively crisp line there. Anyway, loud noises. <laughs>
All right, let's go back up. Okay, we're in a good place. 240. It's a little bit awkward with the lip, I gotta say. But you gotta try new things. I think I already said that once tonight. Got to try new things in life. Three-something next. I don't know. There we go. We'll go Everybody hanging in? <laughs> I have not been watching the chat whatsoever. Oh, just everybody laughing. All right. That's backwards. Should we try to brand it? Should I make a big enough recess that I can get a brand in there? Yeah. Let's try that again.
see if I can actually get it flat enough that the whole brand properly punches in this time. Yatoba! I just wanted to sing that just now. go get my brand and plug it in start it heating up while we take a little sit I think it'll fit in there still hanging in 19 all right people are still hanging in all right let that heat up for a bit sorry about the dust Uh, no hole, no hole, no hole. Then he made the hole. <laughs> yeah, the cedar pole was a little bit of a uh, little bit of a debacle. <laughs> Depth gauge hole. We're talking about the uh, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Well, you know. It is what it is. You guys, I'm, I'm sure most of you only tune in hoping that I'm going to wreck whatever it is that I put up there. <laughs> I know Pinnell does. I know the only reason Pinnell shows up is, is hoping that I'm going to wreck whatever it is I put up there. 
It's like NASCAR. There you go. Yeah. You don't tune in to watch people turn left. Ugh. Not true. Oh, not true that you tune in. Yeah, no, I know Megan actually wants the successes. She wants to buy them. <laughs> Is there dust in my beard? Oh, I am going to be so happy to have this coffee table out of my, out of my shop. Hopefully over the next few days, I can get the rest of the parts sanded, get it glued up and I can start getting finish on it. Get it out of my shop. It's in my way. Like I can't do anything except lathe work in my shop right now. Because it takes up my bench slash table saw area which is fine I just go play on the lathe but it's a little bit annoying to only have that as the option you know I don't think I'm gonna wait the entire that, that brand takes about 20 minutes to heat up so I might flip that around not oil the outside Flip it around, do the inside, and then brand the bottom of it, and then oil the whole thing. No, I don't like that, because I like driving the finish down into it while it's spinning. I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe it's a long show. Where are we at? We're at 37 minutes. Maybe we'll hang out for 20 minutes and wait for the brand to heat up. I don't know. I think that's the better option, actually, because then I can... Get the finish on it while it's spinning. Oh, hope it doesn't get boring for you guys just sitting here waiting for me to get back over there, though. We could talk about things. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I got nothing. Oh, well, I was late. That's true. But I'm I'm 38 minutes into the actual stream. So, like, since I started it. So, I'm actually at 45 or something. <laughs> we'll hang out. We'll talk about who's the best band in the world. Here's a, a poll question for you guys. Who is the best band in the world? That's... No, that's, that's too hard to do. Because who... who Who's your favorite band right now? Who do if there's a default band for you to put on something to play it? Who is it going to be? BJ says Pink Floyd. I like that answer. Uh, am I going to get more turning chisels? Yes, I absolutely am. I'm going to get at least a spindle gouge and a skew chisel, and maybe another bowl gouge. BJ also says Pearl Jam. You said you can't say you can't say Pink Floyd and Pearl Jam. Well, you can, because those are two of my top, probably five as well. Pearl Jam is always going to be my default. Um, home Free, acapella group. Cool. Acapella's cool. Opeth. I don't think I've ever heard of Opeth. King B67 says Opeth. Queen is a, is a decent answer. I did have two different questions. The best band in the world... And your favorite default band. Brian A, I like that answer too. Alice in Chains. I, I was never a huge Alice in Chains fan, but if it's on, I'm going to listen. Uh, Pearl Jam is easily my favorite band of all time. Uh, closely followed by the Tragically Hip. Probably would be my top two. Uh, Pink Floyd's a good answer, though. I actually like a lot of... Uh, like David Gilmore by himself stuff as well. Uh, Megan says the hip. I like that. Van Halen's a good answer. Metallic is a good answer. Alabama. Sheldon. <laughs> I grew up in Saskatchewan and I listened to a lot of Alabama when I was growing up. I uh, 
actually like I, I'm really into this uh, blues rock guy from Victoria um, called Jesse Roper. If you guys have never heard of Jesse Roper I and you like blues rock type music, look into Jesse Roper. Um, he's, he's probably up in my top 10 sort of default, put it on the stereo thing. Who else? Who else can we say is up there in terms of like always an option? Metallic is always an option. Uh, Soundgarden, old Chris Cornell stuff, always an option. Chris Cornell solo stuff. Yeah, Zeppelin is a good option. Always a good, you can never go wrong. Um, ACDC is hit and miss for me. I can, I gotta be in the right frame of mind for ACD. ACDC, I find more of a driving song. Like if, if ACDC is on in the car, on the highway. Uh, but there's, there's a time and a place for ACDC, but I don't know. Uh, Kiss is good at times. Same because I'm I Kiss and ACDC are in that same place for me where I have to be feeling it. Stones, it's a good option most of the time. Smashing Pumpkins, old, old Smashing Pumpkins. I haven't listened to new Smashing Pumpkins, but like Siamese Dream Smashing Pumpkins. Tom Petty, I'm guessing you mean, as opposed to Tom Perry. <laughs> Queen, as somebody else says, Queen, Def Leppard. Yes and no. Same kind of thing with Kiss and, uh, and ACDC. Time and a place for Def Leppard. Same with like Aerosmith. There's a time and a place for Aerosmith, but it's not like an always fine to put on Eva adore nice yeah old school smasher conference Bob Seeger nice I actually I also uh, uh, big sugar I'm a big sugar as like a it'll always work Queen is cleaning music that's good I like that Luke Bryan, I don't know who that is. Uh, seems like Sheldon might be a country guy. Is Luke Bryan a country guy? Johnny Cash, Elton John, like nice. See, these are all these are all good things. We should make a playlist. This this show's team should make a playlist. I like that idea. I'm gonna figure out a way to make that the, to, to make a, a playlist. The Mike's wooden things and stuff live stream fans playlist that's gonna be a thing rush is mandatory at times rush is another one of those ones you either love rush or you hate rush i i'm a fan but rush nobody is just okay with rush you either really like rush or you really can't stand them may have to change channels Yes, hey Sheldon, I made your I, I made your snowman. You can go. <laughs> Everybody's allowed to like what they like. Maybe I'll slip a country song into the Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff live show playlist. I'll put whoever the hell Luke Bryan is. I'll put one of his songs in there. <laughs> <laughs> feel the love Prince is good Lily I like that <laughs> poor Sheldon don't feel bad for Sheldon he hasn't sent me the 
Remember, we're supposed to be bugging him about getting me that logo. Where's my logo, Sheldon? I did the snowman. A little nitty gritty dirt band for Sheldon. That'd be all right. I, who does Copperhead Road? I did like Copperhead Road. Does that count as country? That was a good song. <laughs> this is fun. Should we even finish this bowl or should we just talk about music all night? Steve Earl. There you go. Locos on your computer. I know. I'm just bugging. <laughs> hey, you bugged me for that snowman for like a month. Okay. I get to at least bug you about the, the logo thing. You do. You made the mistake of telling me that you were going to send it to me. Okay. I just thought you were just playing with your machine using my logo, but you told me that, that it it's for my wall. So now I get to, now I get to bug you. Uh, what project will I be working on after the table? Uh, after the table, I have a commission that I have currently forgotten what it is. But it's just a little thing. It might be Temple of the Dog. Good answer. Uh, it, it's, it might be a rolling. Oh, it's a, yeah, walnut rolling pin, which is not really a big thing. Um, and then I'm going to launch into the guitar in unless depending on when the table gets out of here, I might squeeze the, either the doors or the drawers of the sharpening station in between the coffee table and the guitar. But we'll see about the timeline on that. Cause basically February 1st, I'm starting this guitar. So if the table gets out of here in the next week, then I've got a couple of weeks and I can maybe do either the doors or the drawers on the sharpening station. And then, uh, then we're launching to guitar. Do I have any snow there? Nope. We don't, uh, we get snow for about a week twice in a winter. And currently it's not that one of those weeks. I only have quarter inch MDF for the logo right now. That's okay. I can wait. I'm just going to keep bugging you. I'm not impatient. I just think it's funny. <laughs> Go down to, oh, where was it? Like Halifax Hardwoods or something that you guys were telling me is a cool lumber store out there. And you just see if they can cut you off a, a, a scrap of walnut. Oh, a walnut logo would be sweet. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. You do a t do a test one that turns out, and then uh, and yeah, that's a good idea. Purple heart would be cool. Uh, yeah, once it once it actually don't don't practice on walnut. Maybe something something bright. To like make it stand out, something red like a paduke or a bloodwood or something to make it like pop off, off the background. That'd be cool. Maybe I'll do. Uh, what do you figure it would cost me to send you, like a four and a half inch block of wood? It's got to be less than five bucks to ship it in a bubble mailer across the country, right? No, maybe not. Pens are about fifteen bucks. I was going to say, I could send you the piece of wood for you to put the logo on and you could send it back to me, but that's it. that doesn't seem economical. Let's get another beer. Ugh. I think we're just about at pot branding iron point. I'm starting to smell it. It, it's the branding iron takes way too long to heat up. It, it's only really I, when I'm doing like a batch of charcuterie boards, it's fine because I let it heat up for half an hour and then I go bang, 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 bang down the line. But for one thing, it's kind of annoying. Cut a pocket and fill it with dyed epoxy. Yeah.
Yeah, that that's not a terrible idea. You could cut you you do the CNC of the logo, and you and then I could you could send it to me, and I could fill it with with an epoxy with like some swirls and dyes and stuff in it. Interesting idea. First epoxy project. Hey, first epoxy project could be finishing the logo that Sheldon made and sent across the country. This is not a terrible idea. If you make it a little bit bigger, like if you make the piece of wood a little bit bigger, then I could put it on a plate and turn it round around the logo. Hmm. Maybe not. Not sure I like that. Because what if it's not dead center? That would look stupid. I don't know. We'll get this figured out. Glow in the dark die for when the breaker goes. Yeah, funny guy. I like that guy. He's hilarious. <laughs> it's, oh, I got to get that. I got to get that ironed out. Coffee table out of my way. Doors and or drawers for the sharpening station. And then get the damn electrician in here. That's true. You could just cut this it into a circle on the CNC. What am I it, like? I'm overthinking stuff. Are we hot? Are we hot enough? Probably not, actually, to be fair. It's okay. We're having fun, right? <laughs> We're just hanging out. It's our really like the stuff that's going on in this bowl it's not going to come up on camera but like the flaminess in this thing is super cool anyway <laughs> just i just like like this what i like the this guy might be okay too with the little rim okay megan go get a wine why is the wine not beside you Like, isn't it date night? Don't you just leave the bottle of wine on the table while you're watching this on your big screen TV so that my head is enormous? <laughs> uh, missed your question earlier. Can you use the brand on a pork chop for my next cooking video? Uh, yes. Let's just, let's just go with yes. I will use the brand on a pork chop during my next cooking video. Because I don't know that there's going to be another cooking video, dude, honestly. <laughs> it's a, well, okay. No, that's not fair. There probably will be another cooking video at some point. Because I'll just be like, let's make, let's film myself making dinner. But I don't know that it's going to be pork chop again. That would be weird to do a second cooking video and have it also be pork chops. And then I have meat schmutz on my branding iron. I'm going to change my answer to no. No, I'm not going to use my brand on a piece of meat. New answer. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun show. <laughs> Where are we at? 54. Where were we at? No, nope, still not there. At an hour, an hour into the show, we're going to brand the underside of this thing. And then, yes, like the Star Wars toasters. I do, uh, we have a, we have an Avengers, or like, yeah, it's an Avengers waffle iron, which is pretty cool. It's got four, it's got the Avengers logo, Thor's hammer, Captain America's shield, and what's the fourth one? I don't remember. But well, we got an Avengers waffle iron, and it's awesome. <laughs> and Mike's wooden things and stuff, branded steaks. Uh, no, but I did. I bought a pack of veneer business cards from Lee Valley. Last time I made a Lee Valley order, I threw in a 
a pack of veneer business cards and I'm going to, I'm going to brand those and then just like hand write my info on the back of them, which would, could be cool. I still, you guys maybe should have a say in this. In my uh, resolutions video, I said one of the things I'm going to do this year is to make merch and like branded things for people to purchase. I don't know whether they're going to, but people have been asking for it. And so I figured what the heck. Uh, I would like to have a Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff hoodie or t-shirt or something. Uh, what do you guys think if I was going to make sort of three or four items with my logo on them, what do you think those things should be? I'm thinking like a coffee coffee cup or a travel mug of some kind, some kind of beverage container. Amber says hoodie. BJ says shirt, like a t-shirt with just a little patch logo up here. I like uh, beer stein coaster. Why would make those? Uh, travel mug toque is an interesting idea. Hoodie, t shirt, turk, hoodie, t shirt, toque, coffee mug. That's a pretty good list. Baseball hat. I think I might sell one of those. Maybe. I mean, maybe I could just like. I find somebody, like a company that can just send me like a whack of just random stuff to brand. And then I learn how to like screen print and just make random things. I'm not taking down orders. No, I am absolutely not. Stickers are definitely a thing. What's a toque? Uh, toque is, what do they call them in other places? Beanies? Is that what they call? It's like a, a warm hat. I own two a line. There you go. I think I think hoodie, t-shirt, some kind of beverage container, and maybe maybe toque would be cool if people were interested in it. Yeah, knitted hat, band aids. Yes, <laughs> mice wooden things and stuff. Band aids. I'm a partner up with Veritas. And we're going to put my logo on those band-aids. That's what's going to happen this year. <laughs> okay, maybe people are saying baseball hat. Maybe I'll make a, a ball cap. I don't know. These are the types of things that I, I think are, if anybody's going to order them. Yeah, I'll just call Robin Lee and be like, hey, Rob, what up? You may not have heard of me. But uh, approximately 20 people watch my weekly uh, live show on Saturdays. So you, you should probably be interested in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk cross promotion. I don't know if, uh, if too many people are familiar with your little Lee Valley <laughs> yeah, it's a travel mug, t shirt, hoodie, and some kind of hat, I think, will be where I'll start. What is this Lee Valley of which you speak? Hey. Don't talk to them until we partner up because then they'll know that there is a benefit to this relationship. <laughs> I called Lee Valley customer line one Saturday and a guy named Rob answered. I asked and it was not Mr. Lee. <laughs> you think, you think there's a possibility that maybe he's just like, Oh, Steve didn't show up. I guess I got to man the phone line. <laughs> that'd be cool though I feel like he might actually not be that difficult to get a hold of like that company seems like a, 
a pretty cool company that you, if you called and asked to talk to Robin Lee, you might actually be able to. Yeah, ball cap, Fred. It is. It's an idea. I think I might just learn how to screen print, and just order bulk things, and make them myself and ship them out. Because at least that way I don't have to like stock inventory. Like I could make them in like at the end of every month. I could make the batch of orders, like the three things that got ordered. I could make and send out. Maybe customer support goes to a cell on the weekend because he's not, he's too cheap to pay somebody to man the phone on the weekend. So he just sends, he forwards it to his cell phone. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Let's try to brand the underside of this thing. We'll see how flat I got that spot. Come on. I don't know. It feels pretty flat, but it did on the last one there, too, so. Oh, and I don't have enough. I don't have enough cord. There we go. Flip it over the bench. Ouch! I didn't swear. <laughs> I didn't absolutely, I absolutely did not just burn myself on my branding iron. All right. Hey, 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 so that actually turned out okay there. <laughs> I may have just burned the snot out of my finger. I'm just gonna go run this under some water for a minute. Just give me a sec. It didn't, it's not, it's not a, like a third degree or anything. <laughs> Just talk amongst yourselves. Be back shortly. Uh, okay. Let's get rid of our excess. Heat.
So, the lesson for today is don't touch branding irons. God. <laughs> Let's get some oil on this thing. Yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. It wasn't even, like, the brass part of it. It was, like, the shaft. Yes, it's unplugged and off and stuff. It's okay. Hmm. Where is... And get rid of that little sort of heat haze. Whatever. <laughs> Always an adventure. Mike's wooden things and stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty okay. <laughs> oh, Yatoba's nice. God. Okay, let's go, let's go sit again. <laughs> I'm going to flip that around in a couple of minutes. Oh, God. I'm really good at this. <laughs> it's no maple pearl. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Or cedar. I don't know. Oh, right. I do know what Megan's obsession with cedar is. I was going to say, I don't know what your obsession with cedar is, but we've had the conversation. i just hold my beer with this hand. Because <laughs> my beer is cold. God. Every, like every show, something terrible. <laughs> terrible and or stupid happens. Every show. Mike's wooden things and stuff. Burn cream. Hey, I like this idea. I should actually. I should email Howard's and see if they're interested in partnering up. Because I think I probably am selling their things for them at this point. Krista asks, what's my worst injury? Woodworking injury or altogether injury? Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm going to get it because of this show. See, yeah, you guys should, you guys should email Howard's. All of you should email Howard's and say, where can I buy this product that I saw on the Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff? live show that's what you should do like i can't find it at any of even if you can find it 
I can't find it, but Mike's wooden things and stuff, it, it works amazing, and I've seen him use it, and it, where can I get some? And email it, just flood them with emails. <laughs> and, then and then they'll send me a big check for $47. Call and ask for Howard. Yeah, can I, can I speak to Howard, please? Oh, right. Sorry, Krista. Um, my worst injury altogether was probably when I was in a skiing accident and I paralyzed myself on the side of a mountain as a teenager, which is why I have ongoing back problems to this day. Um, it was a temporary, obviously, paralyzation, but it was, it was not fun. Um, the worst shop injury I've had. Well, the only, the only shop injury I've had that I needed to go to the hospital for. So I guess that would be considered the worst one was when I touched my bandsaw blade with that fingertip right there. You can't even really see it anymore because I'm a ninja and I touched my bandsaw blade and I got it out of there and I, I only went a little ways in. That would I probably be the worst shop injury, I think, that I've had. Yeah. It's the only one that I ever had to actually get medical attention for. I was, I was testing its sharpness. I was, because I didn't know whether it needed to be changed or not yet. And you know how, like, when you're using bandsaw blades and you use them for too long, their performance lowers? I couldn't tell if the performance was lowering because it was dull or because I was getting worse at using a bandsaw. So I tested its sharpness. Hey, right on. People are... The lathe... Yes, Megan, the lathe was the scariest of the injuries. But uh, it was... The lathe injury... The lathe injury was the worst emotionally. Because it was... It was the one that that impacted me the most in terms of, like... What are you doing? Like, I honestly, I questioned whether or not I should be making things when I did that to myself. Whereas the bandsaw one was just like, ah, oh, you idiot. You know, like, I had, yeah. Okay. We're going to flip this bowl around. We're going to take the inside out of it. We're going to not do any more damage to ourselves. <laughs> and we're going to... Yeah, come on. Come on back. No, don't send them the link to this show because then they'll... Then they'll see me asking you to do that. That's not going to work. <laughs> then I'll be found out. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you can send them the link to the channel. They're never, they're never going to watch this nonsense. Mr. Howard, that's right. Mr. Howard will not have time to watch this. He has important things to wax and feed. This is exactly true.
That's a big recess. I hope this holds. <laughs> All right, here we go. This was supposed to be a fast one. <laughs> this is a stupid show. It's okay, I'm not waiting on butter chicken. I think we're just having hot dogs or something tonight, so. Here we go. Back at her. back in a minute here <laughs> feels like maybe I'm really not as sharp as I want to be
take. All right, we'll use the green tape. We're going inch and a half. then maybe a little bit more than that. We'll see. That's where we're going to put our tape. Just go until you see the logo. That is an option, I guess. We make a big Yatoba funnel tonight. That'd be good. <laughs> I'm gonna stop there. I got got fairly deep there fairly quickly. Okay, good stuff. I gotta back you guys up because I gotta swing around in front of you. I'm getting I'm getting pushy. I can feel it. <laughs> Bring face shield and mask for next meeting. <laughs> but doesn't it doesn't it like put you in the experience I do have to figure out I want to figure out a better filming situation at some point this year too so I can get some better angles and stuff on things because it's not ideal the way that I have it set up right now on the tripod and just move it around I'd like to get some kind of articulating arm situation a go yes, we've talked about the GoPro on the tool before. It's probably not a thing. Overhead is a shot that I want to be able to get. Hi, Riley's Woodcraft says. Hello. <laughs> I would like an overhead shot, and I would like for you guys to not always be in the path of the things that are coming out uh, when I'm going into the bowl. But I also don't want to rig up tripods and stuff all over the place. Three D would be cool, with the shavings coming at you and you're like dodging around. And that'd be great. <laughs> Mike's wooden things and stuff. Three D. That'd be great. Sponsored by Howard's Feed and Wax. Overhead would be a good. You're right. I would I would definitely like to get a rig up an overhead situation over there. Oh. Ooh. I get one of my resolutions for this year was to get some floor mats. 
I got some floor mats, but they're they're not like the heavy duty industrial ones that I actually want. But there's something to actually like be a temporary solution while I continue to shop. It was another one of the things I was going to do to get ready for the show tonight. Put down my new floor mats. I didn't get to do that. Hey, we're 24. We get to 24 people. I, I, my record, still 26. I got to 26, I think, two weeks ago. And only 10 of you? Did they, we did the thumb button? That's bad viewering or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I get it. Extension cord in my way now from burn my finger. <laughs> We're at an hour and a half, and I'm not done my bowl yet. It was supposed to be a fast one. It's all, it's all, it's all going downhill. But we're having a good time. We're hanging out. It's Saturday night. Having a couple of bevies. Making a yetoba bowl. It reminds me a little bit of the uh, the Super Mario tubes. That you can go down some of them and go get coins. It's got that little a little bit of a... On the top of it. It's not quite as that... And it's more shapely than that, but <sighs> welcome to the uh, yeah, we're having fun. The music conversation was good. What should we talk about next? What's the best movie you've seen in the last year? Trying to convince my brother and friend to watch and drink, still working on them. Uh, the Burns, it's not... It's red. I don't, it's probably not going to show up. It's, it's a burn, but it's not... I have the Laguna 1216 lathe. Riley's doing a live edge bowl right now. Ooh, Mr. Fancy Pants knows what he's doing, probably. If he's doing live edge bowls. You shouldn't be watching this show if you know what you're doing. <laughs> Wayne's World, not recent, but fantastic. Yeah, Wayne's World is, is another one of those sort of default, like you can always just put it on if you want to just go into something. I'm like that with Lord of the Rings, actually. If I just need a movie to put on, pick a Lord of the Rings and put it on, and it's fine. The only new movie I watched in 2020 was Borat. There was a new Borat movie. I must have missed the, the newsletter on that one. I was not a huge fan of the first one. He's a, he's a relatively funny dude, but I didn't like Borat enough that I would probably watch a sequel. 2020 sucked for movies. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean... I'm just saying, like, what's the best, best movie you watched last year? Like, we got Wayne's World was the best movie somebody else watched. I watched the, Into the Spider-Verse. The, the Spider-Man animated movie was, like, better than it should have been. Like, for an animated Spider-Man movie, like, it was pretty good, like, for a, a film John Wick, Frozen 2, I, did I ever see Frozen 2? I don't think I ever did see Frozen 2. The other two family members have seen Frozen 2, I don't think I ever actually caught it. Borat's subsequent movie film, that's probably what it's actually called, that's probably the name of the film, but Borat's subsequent movie film. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not going to go out of my way to watch that. 
but it's probably equally funny as the first like the first one was was relatively funny i i expect this one will be also be relatively funny but not worth going out of your way for super bad that's a movie i haven't seen for a while uh don't do not spend money to watch the new Wonder Woman 1984. You've been warned. Austin Powers Gold member, nice. I tonight we're doing the Sleeman original draft. It's kind of like it's that default. It's it's Pearl Jam. It's tragically hit. It's the it can always be on in the background and you can enjoy it. That's what the Sleeman original draft is. Trolls World Tour. World Tour. Didn't see that one either. TV shows. I don't watch TV. Queen's Gambit I've heard good things about. Wife was watching that for a while. I don't I don't spend a lot of time in front of the TV unless it's like family movie night. So I don't I don't know anything about shows. Like I I still haven't watched like uh, a lot of TV shows. I never even finished um, Breaking Bad. I got to like season six. And I was like, ah, okay, I'm good. Charlotte's Web, Mega Mind. That was a good movie. I I, hit, I did hit twenty seven. <laughs> New record. Must because because we're talking about movies or something now. Yellowstone, never heard of that. But I don't do shows. I do movies. I should. Uh, there's so many shows on the list of like, you got to see this show that I never saw. I got to get to watching shows eventually. Game of Thrones. Like I read all of the books numerous times uh, a decade ago. Should probably watch the show at some point. Apparently, it was quite popular. <laughs> Let's finish this bowl. You guys are dusty. Okay, we're bottomed out, I think, right? Let's get back to what we were doing. Got to refocus. Yeah. I could go a little bit deeper, but I'm not right now. I gotta thin out through here, and get it smooth out that transition. And then we'll get sanding and finishing, and then we can have the rest of our conversation about shows and movies. Where's my tack cloth? I don't know. catchy there. Still safe. We're good.
Come on. Settle down. Let me just come back in now, I guess. Yeah, I don't really want to go any deeper there. <laughs> Should calm down. We're not in a hurry. We're hanging out with friends. We're having a good time. We've done damn near two and a half hour shows before. Let's just... <laughs> it'll take how long? <sighs> However long it takes is how long it'll take. I am pretty close to liking how this is, though. I don't want to go any deeper. I kind of don't mind the thickness of the walls. I'm going to flush off up here and round that down. And we're going to get sanded. good I think you know what if I'm if I was gonna be picky I would go a little deeper right where it bends in but I am not gonna be picky <laughs> Because I burned the snot out of my finger. And I am not risking any other bad things happening today. This is going to be a nice thing. I'm going to make sure that this is a nice thing. Instead of actually trying to overdo it. Let's go. We got to sand. We're a little bit little bit rough on the inside there so we're gonna start down at what can I even get the full-on sander in there yeah we're gonna dig in there with 80 right in the corner because that'll help take care of a little bit of that thing that I was just talking about. Getting a little thinner on the inside bend. Just a little bit. Loud noises.
We're up to 400 on the inside. I have a feeling that this is going to look fairly nice when I put some stuff on it. You guys want to come in for this? Yeah, that's okay. I'll let that soak in. <coughs> I'll take one more break. Whew. And then we will take it off and have a look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Toba always seems to be a pretty good choice. It's a, uh, it's a nice wood. I, uh, I mean, it's no walnut, but it's pretty nice. It's, it's pretty nice. Oh, oh, I lost connection. Is everybody still here? No. Okay. Well, I didn't want you here anyway, Pinel. <laughs> you voted for the wrong wood. <laughs> I just slapped you. That's... It's not a bad burn. It's not it's not great though. It's not a like go have it looked at. Oh Yatoba. I think I think I might go look for some more of that on the rack next time I'm there. Because it's pretty nice. And that's the second one. I think the first one's up on the Etsy store. Maybe. That one probably will go up there too. I don't need all these bowls. <sighs> Idiot. Idiot. I'll put some kind of cream on that later. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at it every day. Well, it's for sale. Uh, you just try to convince yourself to pull the trigger. Where are you? Maybe the, maybe I can get you a deal on shipping or something because I I have to estimate the shipping costs, and I so I put them at a certain amount and sometimes they're over that and sometimes they're under that, but I have to estimate it. Alabama is probably about where that shipping cost is going to be. Cause there's a, sometimes people order them and they're like in Washington or, 
Idaho or something and it doesn't cost as much. But then sometimes people order them from Florida or Texas even for some reason is more expensive. We grabbed a frying pan that was in the oven. Yeah, boy, we both burned ourselves tonight. Waiting on you to make her one? BJ, we'll just make her one. Kansas. What bowls do I have now? Uh, the, I don't know. They're on the Etsy store plus the spalted maple one that never made it up, that hasn't made it up yet. Plus the elm one that Megan bought that hasn't gone out into the mail yet. Plus this fantastic, beautiful ash, swamp ash thing. Uh, plus this Yatoba. I don't know. There's a few. I try to put them up on the store in batches because it's kind of a hassle to like go through the process for just one. So I usually wait until I have a half a dozen or so before I put them up on the store. And sometimes... They'd never make it up to the store because people contact me directly and say, hey, I want to buy that bull. Mr. Beckham <laughs> and Megan, in fact, have both done that, which is awesome. I mean, it's a it saves me the cost and everything from posting it on Etsy. I don't have to give Etsy any money and I can pass those savings on to you guys. They will stack up. You've got, Megan's got Elm and Myrtle? I don't know. There's a stack that has a Megan tag on it. Uh, how do you like my carbide tools? I don't... Okay, that's a hard question to answer because I don't like my carbide tools, but I like carbide tools. I, I'm going to get a couple of better ones. I'm going to by the, I think I'm going to get a couple of the easy wood ones, like the good quality mm -hmm. ones. The set I have is the cheap garbage set from Penn State Industries. It's like the starter three-piece kit thing. And it's fine. I do like mm -hmm. how they operate. I just, I know that a better quality set of carbide tools is going to be an improvement. Oh, I'm starting to get a blister on it. Um... So I do, I like carbide tools for what they do, but they're, they're not a replacement for, you got the Rikons, BJ got the Rikon set with the interchangeable handle thing. I almost got that, but it was expensive. The carbide, that's, Ken Jones is on it. That's the issue. The, the carbide ones that I have are like the short kit. So they're good for little detail work and stuff, but you can't get them overhanging the tool rest very far. And so I'm going to get a set that has some more leverage. Exactly. They're good for pens, small bowls that what you don't have to get too far past the, the tool rest. They're fine for that kind of stuff. Spindle work. It's fine. But I want to get a couple of, a couple of longer ones. I, I'm going to get the, the plan right now is to get the um, Easy Wood Tools Negative Rake Scraper. Uh, how'd the Yatoba Bowl... Oh, man, Mike Bennett's here. Yay. Hey, Mike, you missed it. I uh, Nothing bad happened whatsoever. Everything went perfectly smoothly. And uh, nothing happened that was bad at all. And the bowl turned out fantastically. No, Pinnell's right. I definitely didn't brand my finger. Nope. Sure didn't. No, I didn't, Amber. I did not brand my finger. Why are you lying to our new friend, Mike? See, everyone is, everyone is agreeing with me. I did not brand my finger. <laughs> there there was no swearing the, the video is not going to be demonetized because of curse words 
Um, all of my fingers are fine. <laughs> uh, and I'm about to go pull it off the lathe and everything went perfectly fine. There's no reason whatsoever that it's two hours into the show and I'm still talking. It's, I just, uh, we're, we're just enjoying ourselves. <laughs> uh, gluing some maple and purple heart. Yep, maple purple heart would be cool. I refuse, this is true. I did refuse to brand a pork chop. And then totally didn't brand my finger instead. We did have great conversations about good bands and good movies and that kind of thing. That was fun. We needed to talk about something while my brand was heating up. And then I totally didn't accidentally touch it with my finger after it was hot. Uh, what other bowl blanks do I have? I have got... I'm running low on little stuff again, like stuff that is appropriate for live show. I'm running low on again. I've got some acacia. I've got the maple burl that only Pinnell wanted for tonight. Uh, I've got Gary Oak. I don't, I don't remember exactly everything that I have. Let's go buff one more coat of oil and wax into this yetoba what about elm i don't think i have an elm anymore megan bought the elm i think i only had one yeah totally didn't touch it exactly like i didn't touch the bandsaw blade that's exactly what happened i can't do a big one on the live show megan They take too long. I have to take too many breaks. And nobody is going to sit here for three hours and watch me turn a bowl. Let's turn this back up. I might not even have three hours worth of power on my phone. I don't know my phone can live stream for three hours. <laughs> you guys actually maybe maybe we'll do a, like an extended live show one Saturday night and I'll do a full on big one because I've got I got a couple beauties in there oh you know what I have I got a piece of Yatoba that's 12 inches across and two inches deep. <laughs> I, I totally forgot I have a, a 12 by two piece of Yatoba. This is pretty nice. I do actually quite like the shape that we decided on for the outside of that. A little double cove with a step.
Pretty good. Pretty nice. And branded. <laughs> See, I didn't at all brand my finger. I branded the bowl. This is a this is a nice one. I'm pretty pleased with this guy. All right. There we go. There we go, everybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming along. That was another adventure. So we've got a little double cove with a step, sort of brim thing here. Nice, yeah. Okay. This is a nice wood. It just shines up. Just there's like a luster to this wood that like crazy. All right. There it is. And the brand worked out way better on this one. Like this bowl is way cooler, but I was a little bit not flat in my recess, so the brand didn't didn't do great. But that one came out nice. All right. Oh, that's a good idea. Compare and contrast the current bowls that I'm making against the adequate bowl we could do that right now <laughs> it's up on the top of the whiskey cabinet <sighs> let's go look at the adequate bowl all right so this week in the live show, I made this bowl out of Yatoba. And then earlier, not live, in the week, I made this bowl out of swamp ash. My first bowl... Is this guy out of birch this is the bowl this is the blank that caused me a serious enough injury that kept me off the lathe for almost a year and when I finally got the guts back up to turn again this is what I made out of that bowl blank that hurt me. Here's the adequate bowl. And I still love it. Because it, it's got significance. But man, it's got like some serious bits of tear out. <laughs> like like this, like this huge rip all the way through here. Look at this, like this terrible sanding job on it. This is like transitions are horrible. And I love it anyway. But like the compare and contrast is like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty graphic difference 
in where I've come from to where I am. But it, uh, I mean, that's, that's how life is supposed to go. You're supposed to suck at things before you're good at them. I have to tell my kid that all the time because he gets pissed off that he's not good at things. It's like, well, dude, you just started doing whatever that is. Like, you have to suck. You're supposed to suck at stuff and then not suck as you practice. The explanation of the purple color on the swamp ash. Uh, so I was playing with dye, and what I did is I did a, a layer of navy blue and then sanded it back so that it would just be in the grain. And then I did purple over the top of it so that the, uh, the figured areas and stuff would be accented a little bit more than they would have if it was just one color of dye. Yeah, that's the story behind the dye on the, the bowl wants a rematch. No, this, this is gonna live exactly like this up on the top of my whiskey cabinet. This bowl, it's not even round. Like it's, you look at the, the top, Versus, like, as we turn it, it gets wider. Like, it's... <laughs> I love it. That little birch has still got fight in it. Yep. No, it's... It's, it, 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 it's perfect living up on top of the whiskey cabinet. Because every now and then I have a look at it and I go... Whoa. <laughs> The dye on the bowl was writ, I guess, is what it's called. Yeah, it's a writ. It's technically a fabric dye, but it's, it literally says on the bottle, like, for this and this and this and this. Can I explain what happened in the accident? Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, and I was using a crappy little lathe. It was bouncing all over the bench because it wasn't bolted down. I was using a bench chisel instead of a proper turning tool. And uh, I was trying to keep things from bouncing around and film the process with my camera on a tripod. And I wasn't focused. And just everything just came together into a bad place. And I touched the chisel to the wood before the chisel was on the tool rest and it caught the wood and the wood brought it down into the chisel and drove it into the wood and it popped a huge piece of the wood out and broke my finger and slammed the chisel out of my hand and the piece of wood and the chisel hit me in the stomach. <laughs> and yeah, it was unpleasant. And that's the story of the lathe accident. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you got to suck at things before you can get good at them, right? I mean, don't, don't do that. But uh, it's a good lesson. I learned a lesson that day. I learned a lesson today, too. I didn't remember the breaking finger part. Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it wasn't terrible. Like, I didn't have to have it reset. But I splinted it up for a week. <laughs> Live and learn. That's right. You know. Oh, I'm, it could have been worse. <laughs> the chisel could have caught me in the gut the other side first and that, that would have been worse <laughs> anyway I'm going to go I'm going to put some aloe vera or something on my finger that I totally didn't burn 
on my branding iron tonight. Uh, and I'm going to bid you all adieu. Thank you for hanging out for the Yatoba. Turned out good. Alcohol ink on wood. Didn't like the alcohol ink on wood. Yogurt. That's what I'll do. I'll go get some. I don't, I don't know that I actually have any yogurt. Turn a beer can cover to keep the dust out. <laughs> uh, Pinnell and his beer cozy. He's, I just, what I do is I just use the adequate bowl. And it keeps the dust out. Uh, 12 inch Yatoba extended next week. No, I don't think so. I think actually next week, I think what I might do at some point this week is I might make, uh, six or eight pen blanks and maybe next week we'll just turn a bunch of pens and I'll give one out. We'll see. I haven't decided by Thursday. I will decide what next week is going to be and if it's a bowl i'll put a poll up on facebook and over on patreon and uh and if it's not a bowl it'll you'll find out on thursday or friday or so this upcoming week if you follow me over on facebook or you're on patreon you'll be able to vote on whatever it is next week maybe i'll make a like do you want this bowl or do you want five pens and one of them is a giveaway. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But right now, I'm going to go take care of my finger. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. This is a good one. I'm happy with that. All right. I'm out. Thanks for coming. <laughs> it was an adventure. <laughs>